This is a short video today. We're going to do some machining on the 13 inch South Bend metal lathe. This is an aluminum clamp that has significant corrosion from being stored several years. My brother asked me if I could make a dozen of these. They are used to clamp the legs of a radio tower to a big rotating disc. At first I said, no, these are made on a mill. I don't have a mill. But the more I looked at it, this part can be made on a metal lathe. And I have one of those. So we ordered up some material, 6061 T6 aluminum, and I had them cut it into blocks, three inches by one and a quarter inch, and then I had them cut it three inches long. I kind of thought through the process needed to make these things, and there are seven steps. Drew up a little diagram with the measurements and dimensions that I need to follow, and then we're ready to go. This project is going to need my four jaw chuck, and I also have some soft jaws that I put on each of the jaws. These I just made out of copper pipe, which will protect that soft aluminum. Step one is to cut the rough edge 90 degrees to the factory surfaces, and I chucked up two at a time just to go a little faster. Each edge was indicated just to make sure it was straight into the chuck so we'd get a nice 90 degree surface when we're done. This first cut didn't matter how much we took off. It just needed to be deep enough to get a clean surface. So here I'm using just a high-speed steel cutter, and I'm only taking off about 10,000. Here's a slow motion view. You can see how nice that surface is going to be. The chips are all breaking off short because there's two pieces here, which is good. So we have a nice surface here for step one. Now I can register this new flat surface against the chuck. And that should give us a flat 90 degree surface on the opposite side as well. I switched to a carbide cutter. We have to take off almost a quarter inch in a couple of passes. Here we're taking off about 80 thousandths. Whoa, did you see that? That is why you wear safety glasses. I like watching how these cutters cut right down to nothing. Little measuring here. This project took a lot of measuring. We've got to make another cut, another 80,000 has got to come off. These slow motion views are really fascinating for me 
you can watch how the cutter slices off this material very precise amounts. This is the final cut for this side. I switched back to high-speed steel just to see how good a finish I could get. And you can see here, this has taken off about five thousandths, but the reflection of the tool in the face of the material is almost perfect. Excellent cut. We were shooting for two and three quarter inches, got pretty close. Step three is to cut a one and a quarter inch hole in the center of this block. I can't register it against the chuck because I need an edge of the part above the jaws on the chuck. So I have to make sure it's dialed in properly. Using the dial indicator, I can adjust the four jaw chuck until opposite sides are exactly the same distance from the dial indicator. Once the minimum readings are the same on opposite sides, then I know I'm centered perfectly with the spindle of the lathe. Okay, we're ready to cut the hole. This big hole cutting stuff is going to take several steps here because I don't have all the tooling that were needed, so I had to kind of improvise. First step is to cut through a pilot hole. Once that's done, the biggest drill bit I've got is one inch, one eighth, but this thing hogs off material like crazy. I've got to take the last 1 8 inch or 125 thousandths off with a boring bar. The first cut is to just kind of clean up the ragged edge left by the drill bit so I can get a good measurement. Then more cuts with a boring bar until I get where I need to be, which is 1 inch and a quarter. Here we're taking off about 50 thousandths. 25 thousandths on each side. I cut a piece of test stock that's exactly one and a quarter, and this thing fits just perfectly. Maybe a thousandth clearance. Ain't that nice? Okay, we're up to step four. Now we gotta cut this thing in half. We can't do this on the lathe, but I do have a wood cutting bandsaw with a wood cutting blade. I was a little surprised this went as well as it did. This aluminum is so soft. The wood cutting blade did just fine. Very nice. Step four is just to clean up the edge we just cut. No dial indicator here. I'm just going to register it on the face of the chuck and then cut off a five thousandths or ten thousandths to get it clean. The dimensions on that particular cut don't matter, but they sure look nice. Now we can really begin to see the versatility of this four jaw chuck. We're going to misalign this part so that I can cut the bolt holes on each side. According to my diagram of this part, the 
hole needs to be centered from the long edges, which you can check with the dial indicator by making sure the minimum readings are the same on both sides. Then the end of the part needs to be 190 thousandths less, again, according to the diagram. All that can be done with the dial indicator and a four jaw chuck. We also need to make sure the part is parallel to the chuck, which it is. This hole has a similar process to the other one. I've got a pilot hole first. followed by a larger half-inch bit. This video segment is not speeded up. Once you have that pilot hole drilled and you have a sharp bit going through aluminum, it just blows right through. Now this part calls for a 17 30 seconds hole. Well, I don't have a 17 30 seconds bit, but I do have a 3 8 inch boring bar that just barely fits into a half inch hole. So I will take the last 32 thousandths out with this little boring bar. and a lot of time measuring to make sure I get it right. Here is a segment of that boring bar taking out about five thousandths, two and a half thousandths on each side. Step seven is deburring and cleanup. And here I'm just using the wire wheel to knock off all the burrs and give it a brushed finish. It also takes off the machinist blue dye and minor scuffs that occurred in the chuck. All done. Looks like a real part. Nice shiny hole with a brushed finish. This was a good project for me. It made me measure about a hundred times and learn a few things. Thanks for watching.